So I want to talk about the way in which I find compositions where perhaps I'm a little uninspired or I'm struggling for all kinds of reasons. And I've come to one of the places that I sometimes, I mean, this sounds ridiculous, but I get uninspired photography wise uh, at, uh, at places like this. Or, or perhaps I'm even more, be even more specific, this place, this particular place. There's a number of reasons why that happens. One of the reasons is that I currently live just up there. The thing won't tilt. <laughs> tilt your bugger. It's not tilting, but up the cliff I uh, live. So it's on my doorstep. If we're brisk, this is a five minute walk to, uh, to get down here. So one of the, the problems that I face, and I'm sure a lot of people face is that the closer something is to you, no matter how gorgeous and beautiful it might be as a subject or a place to be, it doesn't mean to say you actually go to it that often. One of the issues of coming to a big open space like this where there's just vast nothingness is finding a composition. Now you could turn around and say, well, hey, just do some minimalist stuff. Well, yeah, okay, as I stand here today, I'm lucky I could potentially do something. We've got a couple of fishermen there and against the, the skyline of, um, of pretty much, yeah, just a solid blue, I'm sure I could get uh, some minimalist shots uh, of them and I might even try that in a while. Um, I'm also quite certain that I could get some nice ICM images of them. Uh, yeah, just a little bit of movement providing a, a hint of um, a, a word that uh, I don't often use. Uh, in um, in the videos, uh, which is impressionism. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with doing things like that. Um, I may well try it. There sure is not a lot else here to get shots of. We're talking about contrast between a few fishing rods or the groins and uh, no, not much else. I mean, if we look at the cliff, well, visually, quite uninteresting. As I alluded with the pop-up, I came back a couple of nights later. I was determined to get a nice, soft, pastely image, long exposure. This is about four minutes. Let me know what you think of it in the comments. I've actually been down to this beach quite a lot over the last week or so, primarily because the first time I shot this video, I actually lost the camera on the beach. Went down a couple of times, couldn't find it. If we look at the sea defences, I'm sure I could do something with those. It's just that I've done things with those before and I feel that I've exhausted the creativity. I, I mean, I know that crap, of course, you know, that I, I can't have done. Yeah, there'll be shots that change here every day. But one of the things that I will do when I'm kind of struggling in this kind of situation is I'll start to look for patterns and detail. and they're everywhere. Sand patterns are really interesting things and if you can get down to the shore where the sea is coming in all the time and, uh, and receding back, as it comes over things like stones and other things that are embedded in the sand and then recedes, it draws more and more sand with it and creates interesting sand patterns and with every flow of that, uh, that wave going back and receding and pulling uh, the material around, the patterns change and uh, sometimes you'll find them sometimes you won't I, there are many on the shoreline here but they're being created by the pebbles and the stones that are everywhere here and whilst they look nice photographically they're probably not that interesting because everything becomes too confusing when you're looking at things like this you want to take stuff away rather than have too much and the stones along the, uh, the, the the strand line here are just, well, they're, they're too much. Nice as the shapes are, what you want to do is find just one or two, or we <laughs> going to get wet there, um, or perhaps work with an interesting shape that's on its own, perhaps even, heck, 
pick up a stone, throw it into an area that's clear, and let the waves do the work to see what happens. With just one or two passes of the tide, some patterns have already emerged there. It hasn't worked very well on this occasion, but <laughs> he gets get wet again. Um, but the point is that I probably chose too small a stone. Choose something interesting, something of an interesting shape. Drop it with a little force so it embeds itself down a little bit. Try all kinds of things. So I uh, haven't found any interesting sand patterns on this beach. Um, there may be some, but uh, let's uh, just show you a couple that I've shot on this beach and other beaches at different times. One of the places that you can find shapes is in these little pools that uh, exist as the tide disappears. And they're not, obviously they're not always here, you know, the, the, the sand shifts and everything. A couple of nights ago when I was here recording the first version of this, take one if you like, uh, this pool here had got uh, quite deep and uh, yeah, had revealed quite a, quite a sharp, nice edge to it. And uh, yeah, that was, that was excellent. But today it's very different it's just well more of a puddle really but it's still got some interest in it and um, I think I'm going to try a shot I've got the camera out I have the long lens uh, on and uh, I think there's something in here the difficulty of course is the sun uh, the fact it's I'm shooting the bottom of the pool so there's an inch or so of water on top which is creating reflection so it's reducing my ability to uh, get position because I've got to go through those reflections. Yes, I can use a polarizer and I may use a polarizer, but only if I have to. So I've got a nice shot just here. There's a rock down in the bottom. It's looking nice, it's got a pebble next to it. It's quite nicely embedded. And the way in which the water has pulled different colors of, um, of sand around is very nice. Um, I've got to be very careful about how far I get over it because I'm pulling my shadow into the bottom edge of the frame. I'd rather have a direct straight down shot but I don't think it's that important. Uh, so uh, duck back a little bit, look down onto it, makes a difference. There's another one here, not quite so clear. But again, very nice. It's a few bits of crap sitting down on the bottom. Place the rock over to one side. It's sticking up out of the, uh, the water a touch as well. So are some of these rivlets here, which are in relief. And the thing with some of these shots is as well, is because there's little reference, particularly in the last shot of just the sand, there's no reference point for size. You've got um, something that could be, you yeah, know, that far away or a shot from space almost. It's very nice. A constant source of great detail shots are the sea defences, particularly groins and such. Uh, and I often ignore these. I don't quite know why. Again, I think it's apathy. I think it's, I can come and shoot them many times, so why should I shoot them now? Um, quite true last night, I came down here last night looking for said lost camera and uh, walked over these particular groins maybe once or twice, and probably four times in the last couple of days. And I've ignored them totally. And part of the reason for that is focusing on something else, but also that light plays a big part of this and when I've been here before it's either been incredibly flat or it's been at the evening where the light's coming from this direction rather than from here and 
Now that these have been exposed for quite some time and have begun to dry out a little bit from the high tide, because it really does come this far up uh, regularly, um, they're looking rather interesting and uh, there's a shot there. So very much the question is, which one do you shoot? How do you shoot it? Are these better here because they're more covered in uh, sea green, if you like, or are they better over there when they're less covered in sea green? Also, because the, uh, the light's coming from behind me, I've got to be careful of not getting my shadow in it. One of the other things we need to be very mindful of when shooting anything like this is uh, the composition. Now, obviously, I mean, it's just uh, probably a stupid thing to say. What, I, what I'm trying to get at is how do we find that composition? Because all too often I work with the... Um, I've got some sand on that. Uh, I work with the screen, which is both helpful and a problem. Because the sun isn't that high yet, I can avoid a lot of the issues of um, shadow by just getting lower and shooting straight on, which is really handy here. Now, here I'm going to really open the, the frame up, or the aperture up. I need to ensure that I have... Uh, very little depth of field because I don't want to focus on anything that's behind this uh, this subject here and I'm gonna shoot just this one here that has the the rock wedged between it and I'm gonna get it in the context of having some space either side of it and beyond it I'm gonna be at f5.6 and there's someone walking towards me so I'm not gonna shoot it yet I need to come back just that little bit more I think because I want to get the bottom of this groin in shot as well because there's a bolt there and there's a couple of holes and the like and I like it. There, that's quite a nice little shot. Let's give that a view on screen. When I'm looking for these kind of shots, I'm looking for texture, I'm looking for colour, I'm looking for light. Light is so important because, as I said earlier, yeah, I've ignored these for the uh, last few evenings I've been down here because there's been no light on them. They're just dull and uninteresting, but the light brings out the depth to them, and uh, that's really important. So it's about, obviously, the subject. It's about the... Uh, the relationship to a degree that the subject has with its surroundings, whether that's a minimalist uh, kind of approach or whether it's um, yeah, kind of grounding the subject because not always is the subject obvious of where it is. Um, and sometimes that's important. It's the juxtaposition of different materials, different textures, different colours, all kinds of things. But by and large, the one thing I will be doing with them is getting relatively close and just focusing just on uh, the detail of a particular area. One of the things that I sometimes find helps me find compositions is actually looking uh, through the camera uh, but I don't walk around with the camera to my eye all the time uh, but I do sometimes walk around holding the phone looking at things um, and more commonly I'm actually just using an Osmo pocket uh, such as what I'm holding here which has got the tiniest of screens on it and what that allows you to do is instantly kind of just focus on a small thing it's perhaps hard to, um, uh, to explain when we look through our viewfinders, rather than using the LCD screens, we completely remove our peripheral vision. Therefore, we're focusing on just one thing. And it's something I would advise people to do more than using the screens. Um, I'm not a great uh, uh, exponent of this myself because um, uh, as I'm getting older, uh, my ability to uh, get up and down and, and such is reducing. And I do like to shoot from the hip very much um, or, or even lower on uh, photography. So uh, I'll tend to use the screen rather than duck down and kneel to, to frame it. It's just easier on my aging body, despite my spring chicken appearances. If you've ever seen a photographer kind of get their, their hands together and create a frame to look through it, there's a reason for it. They're not just being poncy uh, and, uh, and artsy. There, there's a particular reason, and the reason is quite simple. It allows you to 
um, restrict your peripheral vision. It gives you a frame to look through, and that's really important. We we see this happen a lot with um, uh, small screens these days, like phones and such. And there's a, yeah, if we've got the camera on, and we're just uh, yeah, moving around and such, and often it's yeah, it's in mundane. Uh, spaces, perhaps you've turned the camera on and, and you're pointing it down at your feet or something. You think, oh, that's interesting, because it's not a it's it's not a perspective you often see with a frame around it. It makes a heck of a difference to uh, to your perception of um, whether it's interesting or not. Yeah, just looking down at your feet isn't well. You see them every day. Their feet, you know. There's nothing interesting about it. But if you put a black box around that black frame, all of a sudden that perception can change um, or, or is that just me another thing that looking at an image on a tiny screen does uh, it, it takes all of the detail out of it and really just reduces everything presses it down to almost graphic forms so to speak so what I'm trying to say is I suppose that an image can look so so much better on the tiny screen than it does on a big screen particularly if there's high contrast areas of shape and such because that's pretty much all you see but you get it onto a, a big monitor and you look at it and you think bloody hell that's just awful beware of uh, yeah seeing something on a tiny screen whether it's the LCD of the camera whether it's um, yeah, your phone anything like that be aware that when you're blowing up to more kind of conventional size on a 15 inch laptop or tablet or something that as you get more detail in the shot it can look um, well bloody awful so don't always trust these screens but don't distrust them either because it might work incredibly well it yeah but have it in mind that uh, just because it looks great at an inch and a half uh, by uh, by yeah two inches doesn't mean to say it's going to look great on nine inches on bigger you do of course need to have keen eyes not everybody will see these things but it's knowing the kind of things to look for as uh, constantly say it's about color contrast uh, or just highlight and shadow contrast it's about juxtaposition it's about all kinds of things and there are compositions literally everywhere I mean from where we are uh, currently yeah, 360 camera here, yeah. Just do a, a, a complete loop of where this is. And there's shots literally everywhere. But one that I really like is, it is here, it's really simple. It's almost as though I have a, a snooker table growing along here, where the uh, there's more and more green down here and it's just, in the tiny little details uh, of the um, the wood grain down here and it's really nice so get a shot of that and I'm going to do this handheld because it's not worth setting the tripod up uh, for this I've got more than enough light and I'm really just getting tight in on this and uh, it's a case of how much detail do I want? Do I want it right at the beginning? I'll shoot one there. Maybe shoot one a little further back. Really very nice. But of course it's not just these things. We've got the detail and the colour contrast around the bolts here. These are very nice too. And it's, oh, you know, th th there's shots everywhere here. Now for this, I'm going to push my uh, aperture up to f10 because I want to get everything, if I can, in focus. I need to get the background and the nut, or the bolt, because that's about two inches difference. And at this uh, distance and magnification, two inches is quite a lot to fall out of, um, of focus. So. F13 on that, I'm still getting 125th of a second. Uh, and I'm trying to get kind of square onto it. Can I, what does it look like if I don't? 
You see, I'm using the screen. It's the wrong thing to do, especially in this light because it's so bright. I can barely see the screen, so I'm squinting to see the screen. I don't see uh, the imperfections in the shot, and then I create crap. Use the viewfinder, particularly when the light is like this. One of the other problems of light like this, of course, is it does create quite some shadow, though. Had I spotted that before I started talking about these? No. Is it a problem? You tell me, here's the shot. And this is a different bolt on a different day without the shadow. Which do you prefer? Other things that really grab my attention are bits of rope. And there's just this little bit down the, the seam here, or well, the seam, the join where we have a rock wedged in between these sea defences here and a bit of rope just caught on it. And as luck would have it, the rope is a very similar colour to parts of the flint. It's very, very nice. But whether or not I can get a, a pleasing composition, I think it's another matter. The, uh, the shadow here is quite high. I've trodden on this and created some bits of sand on one side that I didn't particularly want. Now, uh -huh. No, scarf, scarf, scarf. One of those I like it to look at. I don't know that I've got a. I don't know that I've got a composition on it. There has to be one, doesn't there? I'm not sure whether this is it, but one of the things that's highlighting here is that I'm coming in at an angle. There's a lot of depth on this, and I'm very close, so I may need to focus stack this, which would really necessitate me putting this on a tripod. If this works, it's using the trick of diagonals across a frame, which just help yeah, frame something. It's, it's more interesting often than just a shot uh, where everything is just square. So I'm gonna shoot a number of shots at this, and I'm also gonna not only focus bracket, but also I'm going to uh, exposure bracket it because I do not feel terribly confident that I have everything in one go here. There should be enough in that to create a nice image. I do hope so anyway. I've gone to a lot of trouble producing this piece of video only to produce crap to show you and at the end say, don't do that. Let me know what you think. I'll leave you with some other images I've taken this year around the Norfolk coast. It just demonstrates that if you stop looking at the entirety of the scene and just focus on a couple of things, then you can get some amazing images. Hope you made it to the end. Thank you very much for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Click the like button, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. See you soon.